Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a very nice exponential equation. We have x squared equals 2 to the power x and we're looking for x values. Now at this point, you may already have the obvious solutions. You can just plug in some numbers to make sure it works. And so that's not hard to find. But we're going to analyze this a little bit more. We're going to take a deeper look. So first thing I'm going to do is ln both sides. Okay, ln is, you know, ln of a is defined as log with base e. So that's my definition for the natural logarithm. And let's go ahead and ln both sides. We get ln x squared equals ln 2 to the power x. Now, you might be asking, why do we ln both sides? If you have an exponential equation, uh, lning both sides is a good idea because it'll help you get rid of the exponents. So you're going to get a nicer expression. Okay, so we can move the 2 to the front to ln x. That's how we got rid of the denominator, and this becomes x ln 2. Obviously, again, at this point, you may guess and check your solution, and that's fine, because guess and check is a problem-solving strategy, whether you like it or not. Now, I don't want to leave it like this. I want to put it in a nicer way. So why don't we put all the variables on one side so we can have ln x over x on the left-hand side, and the right hand side we have ln 2 over 2. So doesn't that look nicer you know than everything else when I compare this expression to that expression obviously uh, something should jump at you x equals 2 is a valid solution. Um, it's not really like guess and check because it's kind of obvious that x equals 2 is going to work right? I hope so. So x equals 2 is a valid solution but the million dollar question is is that the only solution? Is that it? And the answer is no. That's not the only solution. And why? You probably already guessed, but let me tell you something interesting. Now, the expression on the left-hand side is a, you know, a variable expression. It's a function. We're going to look at its graph as well. So towards the end, I'm going to show you something kind of cool. But uh, we, can, we can change the right-hand side. How? Well, I can just multiply the numerator and the denominator by 2. And it's not just out of the blue, because when you do, you get something nice. Like what? Well, when I multiply the top by 2, it becomes 2 times ln 2. Okay, so it doesn't look like super duper important, but the bottom is 4. So we can now, since this is a coefficient, I can move it by using the properties of logarithms. I can move it and make it an exponent. So this becomes ln 2 to the second power. And as you know, 2 to the second power is equal to 4. So we get something like ln 4 over 4. Wow, that's interesting. So in other words, this is very interesting, I think, because ln 2 over 2 is equal to ln 4 over 4. Even though you change the numbers, it still works. So that's kind of cool. Anyways, uh, this tells us uh, another solution, uh, x equals 4. So that wasn't the x equals 2 is not the only solution. x equals 4 is another solution. Well, are there any other solutions? You might be thinking, like, since we already found two solutions, why don't we keep doing this? Like, what happens if I multiply the top and the bottom by 3? I get 3 ln 2. Let's explore. I mean, it doesn't matter, right? Let's just find out what is going on. And now we're going to multiply the 2 by 3. That's going to give us 6. This, when moved, it becomes ln 8 over 6. But unfortunately, these two numbers are not the same. So they don't really fit the pattern well, this equation, you might find a solution, but unfortunately, it's not going to be straightforward. Okay, so this doesn't really give us anything, and we can't keep doing it forever, right? Obviously. Trial and error is good, but not uh, if you do it forever. So, instead, I would like to take a look at this function. What kind of function we came up with? Y equals ln x over x. So, so let's go ahead and take a deeper look. So if you have y equals ln x over x, and then like I promised earlier, I'm going to show you a graph of this. So we're going to be able to see it visually too. So now I'm going to differentiate this function. Why do we do this? Well, some people think that calculus is like super duper hard. Actually, no. If you have a good algebra foundation, if you have a trigonometry foundation, calculus should not be too hard to learn because it's just a bunch of rules. And... You know, that's basically what it is. Anyways, so we're going to differentiate this function using the quotient rule. The derivative of ln x is 1 over x. Multiply by the denominator. 
minus the derivative of x, which is 1, multiplied by the numerator, which is ln x, and then all of that is divided by x squared. That's it. You see, you apply the rule and you get the answer. x cancels out. Of course, x should not equal 0. It's not equal to 0 because it's not even in the domain. But anyways, y prime, the derivative of y with respect to x, becomes 1 minus ln x divided by x squared. Okay, why did we differentiate this function? Because we're going to look at the rate of change. How does this function change? Where does it increase? Where does it decrease? Does it always increase? Does it always increase? Does it make a maximum or a minimum? Does it have any critical points, any inflection points, so on and so forth? All these questions can be answered by doing one thing, and that is the derivative. Isn't that cool? You just do one thing and you can answer a bunch of questions. But not only that, I want to make a table here. So let's go ahead and make a table. And that table is going to look like the following, and I've made these tables before. We're going to have like two rows. One of them is going to be y prime. The other one is going to be y. And on top, I'm going to have the x values. But when I say x values, you have to think about the following. Set the derivative equal to 0. So my goal is to find if there's a point, a x value, at which the uh, slope of the tangent is 0. In other words, can we get a horizontal tangent? And you're going to see in a little bit if that's possible and what it looks like. But from here... Uh, if a fraction is equal to 0, as you know, the numerator must equal, uh-oh, I don't know why it's notability does that sometimes. That's the app I use. A lot of people are asking which app I use. This is notability. Okay. I think it's only available for iPad. Anyways, set it equal to 0. So from here, you get ln x equals 1. And if you e to the power of both sides, whatever you do, you get x equals e. Euler's number. Great. So x equals e is the only critical value. So I'm going to put that on the table. And as you know, e is 2.7 something, right? Something like that. Between 2 and 3, we know that at least. So now we're going to make uh, a table. So what happens? So since y prime is equal to 1 minus ln x over x squared, what happens if x is less than e? Well, x is less than e implies ln x is less than ln e, but ln e is 1, so that means ln x is going to be less than 1. So 1 minus ln x, so since you're subtracting something less than 1 from 1, you're going to get a positive answer, so the numerator is going to be positive. But the denominator is always positive, except for 0, right? But by x cannot be 0 anyways. So now, if x is less than e, the derivative is going to be positive, right? Okay, so how do we express that? We just put a plus sign on the table for values uh, that are less than e, so like this. Okay, what happens if x is greater than e? By the same token, ln x is going to be less than 1. Oh, actually, it's, it's supposed to be greater than 1. Sorry about that. I messed up. ln x is going to be greater than 1, which means that 1 minus ln x is going to be negative, because if you subtract a number larger than 1 from 1, you get a negative answer. Or you could just manipulate inequality, whatever. So now here, we're going to have a negative value for the derivative. Now, what does it mean? If the first derivative is positive on an interval, that means that function is increasing. Why? Because you're talking about a function whose slopes uh, of tangents are always positive, so that function has to increase. But doesn't necessarily mean it's concave up or concave down. It just means that it's increasing. And for the negative interval, our function is decreasing, which means we have a maximum at x equals e. So this function is supposed to increase and then decrease, thereby making a maximum at x equals e. But what happens at x equals e? Let's find out. If you replace x with e, y at e, or you can write it as f, whatever, ln e is going to be 1, 1 over e. So we get a point, e comma 1 over e, is going to be a local max for this function. Now, what is that supposed to mean? Well, it just means that we're going to have a maximum between 2 and 3. So now let's take a look at the graph. What does the graph of y equals ln x over x looks like, right? Well, it looks like this, and it looks like this graph is increasing and then decreasing. And we just talked about it, right? Between 2 and 3, somewhere here, I don't know exactly where, but it needs to have a maximum. It's very, very hard to see. That's why I am going to show you a different version of this graph, which has been zoomed in. So if we zoom in, we'll notice that this function makes a maximum, as we verified before, at x equals e. And then it is going to have an intersection point here and here. The horizontal line, which is red, is the graph of y equals ln 2 over 2. 
and that intersects the graph of y equals ln x over x at exactly two points at x equals 2 and at x equals 4. Therefore, our equation, which was given as x squared equals 2 to the power x, has two solutions, x equals 2 and x equals 4, and those are the only solutions. And this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope that wasn't too long. Please let me know what you think. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.